Hi everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and today I would like to introduce you to the Juki MCS 1500 cover stitch machine and more to the point, uh, this little video is also about telling you what a cover stitch machine does and explaining the difference between it and an overlocker because many, many people I know over the years have bought a cover stitch thinking it does something that it actually doesn't and, um, and don't end up using it. But if you buy it for purpose, it's a fantastic thing to add to your uh, sewing machine equipment. So let's talk about it. This is a three needle, four thread cover stitch machine. Now what that means is obviously it has three needles. Um, and so you have three needle threads and you have a fourth looper thread. And unlike an overlocker, you only have one looper thread. Um, a cover stitch is not a construction machine. It's all about the finishing of the garment. And uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. But let's have a look at the anatomy of the machine. So you've got um, your four threads back here. And I've got um, relatively inexpensive overlocking thread on here at the moment in different colors to try and just sort of explain how this all works. We've got a red, blue, green, and yellow thread. Now, the, um, the three needles are in fact the blue, green, and yellow thread, and the red thread is in fact the looper thread. Uh, very similar to an overlocker. I mean, you look at this and at first glance you would think it is an overlocker, but the threading on the loop on the needles is pretty much the same as any overlocker. So if you've had an overlocker before, nothing new, nothing really fancy there on the needles. Uh, should point out too, the needle, the needle style it takes is a standard um, domestic needle, so very easy to get. You don't need anything special. In fact, you can use a standard universal needle on these, which is really quite quite handy. So you've got your three needles. I'm not going to go through and thread that because that's really quite simple, but I will thread the looper thread in a minute because that's the one, even on overlockers, that people tend to struggle with. Uh, so threading path through to there. A good, good feature about the Juki machine, it has these little, uh, what we call compensating feet here. It's a good solid metal foot. So it really does give you a nice broad spread over the fabric. It handles the, um, the fabric well. The feeding system is perfect. It does have a differential feed mechanism, which allows you to stretch or gather the fabric either purposely or use the differential feed system to prevent unwanted gather or stretch in the fabric. So um, we'll, we'll cover that in another video a bit more in depth on the machine, but this video is really more about explaining that just what it does and, and how it goes about doing it. Obviously you have a stitch length dial around here as well. Another nice feature, uh, full foot pressure control. So that, that is the amount of pressure downwards on the fabric. So you can control that. Generally speaking, you'll leave it set in a medium setting, but some fabrics mark easily and backing off the foot pressure to a lighter texture or lighter tension sometimes does certainly help. Uh, so let's have a look. Open up the front of the machine here and you'll see that unlike an overlocker, there's nothing there. So every overlocker on the market has loads of what we call take up levers and all sorts of things there to deliver the threads to the loopers. The Juki doesn't. In fact, most Domestic cover stitch machines do also have what we call take-up levers here, and that's one of the defining differences between the Juki MCS 1500 and pretty much any other uh, sort of home-based cover stitch machine. It has a different type of thread take-up system. Now I know you're probably watching this thinking, I have no idea what he's talking about. What is a thread take-up system? I'm not going to get into the details of that other than to say that the thread take-up system is what actually takes out the slack of the thread to set the stitch, and that's a really important part on any sewing machine overlocker cover stitch. They all have a take up system. So the uh, being a, a dedicated cover stitch machine, Juki have actually incorporated more an industrial design. And of course, Juki is a big industrial manufacturer. And so they've carried that across to this machine. But that's the first thing you'll see. There's really no confusing components there in the front of the machine. So that's really quite handy. Let's go around to the side here. And what you'll see when I open up this, there is the red thread, that's the looper thread right there. And this is what we call, in the industry, we call this a kidney take-up system. Um, it's a bit of a throwback to the industrial industry, but it's very different to every other domestic type machine on the market. And it's one of the reasons the Juki stitches so well, because it incorporates what I believe is, I know as an industrial mechanic myself, a far better thread take-up system. I'll come back to that in a moment because I'm going to show you how that threads. But before we do, let's see what this machine actually does. So. I've got a, uh, just a bit of woven fabric here, and I'm going to stitch that in just a moment. But before I do that even, I'm going to talk about what a cover stitch does in, sense, in a sense of um, garment construction, etc. So this is, a, um, this is a lovely printed bit of fabric. I think this is from Boo Fabrics. Uh, it's a lycra. Um, and one of the most common uses for 
a cover stitch machine is to use it to finish off swimwear, lycra, uh, sportswear, any knit fabrics especially. And um, so let's have a look at uh, the construction of this item here. Firstly, the garment itself is probably constructed with an overlocker. And if we dig in, we'll under here, we'll find a, a little seam where an overlocker has been used. And we've used different colored threads so you can actually see, but hopefully that's showing up on screen. This is one of the side seams, and that's, that is an overlock stitch. You can see we've got um, the loop of threads, top and bottom, and two needle threads. And if we open that out, it's seamed, it's strong, it's going to hold that together quite well. A cover stitch does not do that. It does not construct the garment. And technically, you probably could in some way, shape, or form, but I, I wouldn't. A cover stitch is more about the finishing effect. So let's have a look at the binding around this garment. So you can see the straps on the, it's a little bathing suit. The straps up here, I'll try and get it sitting correctly. The straps are actually lycra as well, and they've been bound using a folder. And I'll show you one of those in a moment. But when I fold that out, you'll see there's a, a crisscross black thread there. That's not a zigzag stitch or an overlock stitch. That is in fact the bottom side of a cover stitch. And on the top side, you'll just see there's two needle threads there. And you notice I can pull that strap and it will actually stretch with it. So a cover stitch has a great deal of stretch. And in fact, a cover stitch is, is, is a chain stitch and, uh, or a, a form of a chain stitch. So it has got more give than a lock stitch, which is your typical um, sewing machine stitch. But um, that's how you get that lovely, neat finish. And if you look at so many garments you buy, a cover stitch is an integral part of how that garment was made. Now, what it also means is that if we follow that um, strap around, it also has now stitched over the edge of the fabric. And again, using a folder or a binding device rather, uh, the fabric is sewn into the actual binding. And it gives you this perfect edge, perfect finish, continued on here to continue the strap. So quite honestly, apart from a couple of seams with your overlocker, this particular bathing suit is pretty much entirely made using the cover stitch machine. So that's a typical example. Now, let's have a look at the bottom of the leg holes here, and you'll see they're sort of gathered in a little bit. There's the top of the cover stitch, and the bottom is just folded over. It was The raw edge was overlocked first, and then it's folded over to give you a nice, neat, flush, um, non-bulky finish, because the last thing you want on a pair on a set of bathers is a really bulky seam around the, the leg holes, etc. So again, it folds over, comes around, it goes all the way around. We've used different colored threads so you can see it, um, and uh, that just makes it a whole lot easier to understand. But that's a classic example of where a cover stitch is awesome. And uh, I've got loads of other little articles here. Here's another one, again, uh, a simple, there's elastic inserted in there. Looks like whoever did this actually zigzagged the elastic onto the lycra and then folded over and used a cover stitch to get that perfect, clean, neat finish underneath. Gives you stretch, gives you a, a really nice finish and uh, a very professional finish because that's exactly how they do it in the factory. They use a cover stitch machine to do that. Now, let's have a look. I'm going to um, stitch this piece of uh, simple fabric. Now it's only a woven fabric, but this is more about showing you how the stitch forms and what it does. So you can kind of really understand the, um, the process. My machine is threaded and I'm just going to pop that bit of fabric on under there. Little tip, if you have a cover stitch or you're thinking about one, whenever you start stitching on a cover stitch or an overlocker, tip I've always recommended people is make sure it's threaded turn the machine by hand a couple of times just to make sure that the stitches are all forming and it means that any loose threads are, are now sort of taken up a little bit. And I'm just gonna stitch through down here, then we'll have a look at it when I get it out. Now, here's a great tip. Uh, this was actually shown to me by a good friend of mine, Martin Smith, many, many, many years ago uh, for tying off a finished cover stitch because it'll make sense in a moment when I explain in a bit more detail. But when I lift the foot on a cover stitch machine, because often, I should preface that, when you're, when you're cover stitching, you're usually not running off the fabric, you're actually usually stopping on the fabric. And so how do you get the fabric out? You've got to really you know, um, pull it out and uh, make sure that you don't damage the stitching um, and, and that the finish is not nice and neat and tidy. So this particular model, when I lift the foot, it has a tension release mechanism, which actually releases all the tensions on the machine. And as long as my needles are in the up position, the perfect up position, and you can do that by just moving the handwheel until they're in the right position, 
I just grab a, a long instrument of some kind. This is the little screwdriver that comes with the machine for the needles. And I just slide that under there, pull out the threads and separate it. So this is the thread coming out of the needles and the thread going back to the needles. Just trim the thread and then I can pull the fabric out nice and easily. Cut it off there. And there's our cover stitch on the back side. Now you notice that's the red thread is the dominant thread on the back side and there's three needles. So there's yellow, green and blue. Now, because it's a chain stitch, what that means is very, very easily, uh, and you've all had this happen, I'm sure you've had a, a thread run on a garment and it's just unraveled all together. Well, that's very commonly happens on chain stitches. And one of the things you wanna do when you're cover stitching is you want the where you've finished to be a nice, neat finish and you don't want it to unravel. So if you now take those long tails that you have, separate them, I usually like to take two each, so I've got the yellow and red, doesn't matter which ones you do, and then just gently tie that into a little knot and you can now tie off. Do it twice to get a perfect, Ooh, my hands are in the way I'm sure, so I'm sorry about that, but you get the general idea, right? So tie that off and guess what? That will never unravel. So it permanently fixes that seam or that, that, that cover stitch. And then of course you can cut that right back off to the knot. It's not going to unravel. Those knots are going to hold and you've got a perfectly finished cover stitch there. Now again, this is just on a piece of woven fabric and I've used this so you can actually see what I'm doing. Now, next thing I want to show you, hopefully the camera will be able to pick this up. Imagine this is the bottom. I've, you, you'll see I've got an overlocked edge here. It's, it's probably a little hard to see, but it's white on, uh, on the um, calico. I've got an overlocked edge here. And now imagine that's the bottom of a hem and I want to fold it over and I want to have a perfectly cover stitched hem. So this is the inside of the garment. So the folds on the inside. And if I turn that around, I, I want to see a nice neat finish and uh, I'm going to see my cover stitch needle threads on the top. Now, it's pretty easy on a woven fabric because I've just pressed this fabric down so it's kind of nice and fixed. If I was on a knit fabric, I'd probably be pinning this as I go. So as I've, I've got a perfect uh, hem width here. Um, but all I need to do now, because I've got to work upside down, remember I want my needles to be on top, uh, my needle stitching to be on top, not my cover stitching. If I was to stitch it this way and actually see where I'm, where I'm stitching, that I'm stitching over the edge of the, um, the hem, my cover stitch is going to be under, on the bottom, on the outside of the garment. I don't want that. I want the needle stitching to be on the outside. So I turn that over this way. And what I've done is I've actually set my seam, uh, my seam allowance at exactly the same width, which I think is around about the uh, 3 8 or 10 mil, um, at exactly the same width as the presser foot. So I'm going to use this edge of my presser foot as my guide to where I want to stitch. So now that I've got that in there, again, it's a good idea, just turn that wheel a couple of times. I'm using the edge of my foot as my guide and I want to run that fabric perfectly on the edge of the foot and hopefully I can keep it pretty straight. And um, so far so good. Whoa. Now, you might ask why don't I just run off the machine and chain out and then cut the thread like you would on an overlocker. Cover stitch machines don't chain as well as overlockers. So an overlocker, you could just keep chaining it out. But a cover stitch machine, because it is a chain stitch, it's uh, the stitch formation is very critical. And because I know I'm using relatively inexpensive overlocking thread here, I can tell you it won't chain brilliantly. If you're doing, and if you're going to be stitching on, you know, good quality lycras and good quality um, fabrics, I'd certainly recommend using rosant thread as your needle thread because that will give you the best results. But nonetheless, chaining out on a cover stitch is not always ideal and you can, uh, it'll often drop a stitch and miss and sometimes even break the thread. So I generally don't. But remember, what we're normally doing is we're sewing on a tube because we're, we're um, creating a, a, a hem or something like that. And so you, you're going to sew back over the, where you started and then you're going to make sure the needles are in the up position, lift the foot, grab a little uh, a long device like that screwdriver, cut the thread, and then just gently pull that out, cut the loop of thread, and there's our perfect chain stitch. Oops, got a bit of errant thread there, doesn't matter. And that has now stitched over the top of the overlocked raw edge that I had, and that has sewn down a perfect cover stitch. If I was using the same colour as the calico, you'd see a lovely line of, um, of stitches there, and it'd be perfect. Uh, interesting little thing here, and I'll explain this while I'm talking about it. You can see how the, um, the threads have kind of 
gone off on a bit of an angle. That's me not sewing straight more than anything. But when you're sewing a woven fabric, if ever you see the needle stitching sort of stitching down, but all of a sudden it kicks away a bit and it, and it, it doesn't look like it's perfectly straight, almost entirely that is the needle deflecting on the, the wrong side of the grain of the fabric. And it, it, there's nothing you can do about that. That's just part and parcel of stitching on woven fabrics. You'll often see that. So that's, uh, that's how that would finish. And that's a perfect cover stitch under there. And that could be washed and ironed and, and, and uh, laundered and it will never come apart. It'll be fantastic. So in a nutshell, that's what a cover stitch does. It, it's great for um, hems, attaching bindings, in fact, I was going to show you this. We'll do another video on this device, so I'm not going to set it up now, but this is what we call a binder. And these uh, Juki have a fantastic binder available. And uh, I'll take it out of the packet here. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll be doing a nice video on this one. And uh, so a binder basically sits on the machine like this and the binding goes in. Oops, this actually folds around there like that. It sits there like this. The binding goes in and gets folded by this little folding device just here and then you stitch your fabric into it. Uh, look out for the video on that, that'll come soon. But that's a great device for doing the perfect perfect binding and uh, particularly good for lycra, leotards, swimwear, all that sort of thing. Now I did say I was going to show you how this red thread, how easy it is to thread, and I'm gonna do it right from the get-go. So let's take this back here, I'm gonna trim that thread off, and I'm in fact going to now open up this side cover, and I'm going to pull that red thread all the way through the machine. Now a little tip there also, whether you're on an overlock or a sewing machine, it's a good idea to always pull thread through the machine. If you're changing colors, never thread, pull thread backwards through a machine because you can get things caught and, and uh, that's no good for anyone. So completely unthreaded. Let's grab the red thread here. So we simply come up to the guide through there. Now I'll turn the machine around a little bit further. Hope you, hopefully you'll see this. There's the second guide there. So we've come up to the first guide. We come down to the second guide through the back there and we hook that into the little purple. Oops, I'll get it in there a minute. There we go. Grab the thread, give that a bit of a pull so it's in place. And now when you're sitting at the machine, you don't need to turn it around like I'm doing. I'm just doing that so you can see it. There's a little channel just under here, just there. So the thread goes into that channel when you open the door and that's in there now. And so it'll hook up in there. It's nice. We'll just pop that back around now. And tweezers are always a godsend, so um, we always use those. And there is a pair that come with the machine. Then we hook into that guy there. Then there's another little purple dot there. But this is a little tension device for the, the lower looper or the looper thread on the cover stitch. So we go in and under there like so, and then there like that, and then into this guy here. Now, this is the one people often ring me and say, I don't get it. It's not that complex, it really isn't, and there is a guide on the front of the machine, and of course the instruction book tells you everything as well. But from there it goes across to this guy here, and then it comes back. So once you're in there, you come back and under here, and then back to the front. So we've gone in, around the tension, up to here, through there, into this side guide, then back and under this purple dot here, and then back to the front, and there's another purple dot here. So let me just turn this around again. So there's another purple dot there, it clips into there. Whoops, and once we get that into there, this is where it's sensational because it's got such an easy looper thread, looper to thread. The, th the looper is up in here at the moment and there's a little white lever. And the way you actually use this is you pinch it together. So you pinch that and then you can pull it down. I'll do that again. Push that up, pull it down. Okay, now I'm just gonna turn that um, looper so as I can see the looper eye. So I've turned the machine, always turning it in towards you in a clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise direction. Um, yes, anti-clockwise. So at that point, I just thread the machine into the guide down here, two little twirls there. And then I'm gonna cut this thread so I've got a nice clean edge. And then there's a little looper eye right there. So we just pop this through the eye. Whoops, we'll get that out of the way. There it is. And now that that's threaded, we thread it through the looper, the final looper eye, which is just there. Pull that through. And you know what? Just leave that thread sitting there. You don't need to do anything else with it. Push the looper back into position. It's now locked in position. I'm going to leave that thread there. I don't need to pull it up through the plate or anything. 
My needles are still threaded, so we'll just pull that back up a bit. And remember what I said, whenever you've re-threaded, just pop a bit of fabric, a bit of scrap under there, turn it by hand a couple of times, and then start sewing. And that's perfect, there we go. And again, a little example of how to best remove a cover stitch from the machine without breaking threads or getting things tangled. Lift the foot, that releases the tensions. Slide your little screwdriver under there, pull out the threads, separate the top to the bottom, trim it off, pull it out, cut your red thread, and there you're done and dusted. And then tie those little ends off to stop it from ever unraveling. So that's a little explanation of what a cover stitch does. The Juki is a great product, and don't be deceived by this. The, it looks small and compact, but there's actually more space here. And you'll notice there's no cutting blade on this. That's the other big difference to an overlocker. An overlocker cuts the fabric, these do not. So that means that's why you can sew directly over the fabric. Um, so there's a bit, there's more space there than a lot of the more expensive uh, cover stitch machines on the market. Um, even though it's got a nice small footprint, this is quite a heavy machine. It's very solid. It's a solid metal machine. And uh, that's why when it's running, it doesn't bounce around the table. It feels smooth. It's got a, a fantastic just sound. You know, sometimes you sit at a machine and it just, it just sounds right and feels right. These guys do. And I know through the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these that we've sold, uh, people rave about them. Uh, you look at the reviews, they're fantastic. So it's a great entry level cover, cover stitch machine. Um, Check out the prices on our website, you'll be amazed. And uh, yeah, just it'll really complement um, any, anyone's sewing room if you like doing lots of knitwear, especially and, and lycras and also all those sorts of things. So, uh, yeah, uh, Juki's a great manufacturer. I think they have a two year warranty on them. And of course, you're backed by Echidna, so you can't go wrong. I um, hope that's helped uh, explain what a cover stitch is. And if not, get in touch with us and we'll be more than happy to help you. So, for now, Happy sewing. Cheers.